in the research uh, that forms the basis of this conference, uh, we have undertaken to analyze the regulations being in force in seven Central European countries. Our goal was to explore the similarities and differences between these countries and to compare them with similar pan-European characteristics. Contrary to the title of my presentation, I would like to talk not only about the features of the European constitutional regulation. I wish to discover also the objective, objectives of the research and the meaning of the key concepts used in it. Before I get to that, as the leader of the research group, I would like to begin with saying how grateful I am for having a chance to take part in this research. I'd also like to thank all of the participating colleagues without whom it wouldn't have been possible to fulfill our research goals. As all the contributions have been completed, I can safely say that uh, they have uh, done an excellent job and that the volume presenting the results of the research will be what it should be, a complete work presenting the regulation of national and state symbols in uh, Central European countries based on a unified conceptual framework. Uh, but it also covers uh, national specificities and differences. Excellent results have already been produced on the individual nations and countries, but there has been no comparative legal research of a similar scope and content. I'd also like to thank our distinguished professors for the participation and their fantastic contributions. Special thanks, therefore, in alphabetical order to Dalibor Cepulo from Croatia, Dalibor Dukic from Serbia, Benjamin Flander from Slovenia, uh, uh, Katarina Frumarova from the Czech Republic, Peter Kruzlitz from Hungary, uh, Janusz Krobak from Slovakia, Alexander Sirit from Poland, and Norbert Tribble also from Hungary. I believe that neither the protection of state and national symbols nor the research of the related legal regulations has lost relevance in the 21st century. In fact, uh, there may be a greater need for reflection and scientific thinking than ever before. When I was asked to coordinate the research group, we had to decide what aspects of the topic would be covered by the research. I considered it most important to examine the subject from a jurisprudential point of view. Of course, this examination and research may have other implications as well. Nonetheless, we fully respected the methodological preconditions of legal research at approaching the issue. As all members of the research group are lawyers, we considered vexillological or heraldic aspects only where it was essential for the analysis of the legal regulation. Once we decided to pursue the, methodological, uh, the methodology of legal science, there were two obvious approaches for us to consider. Uh, the history of law approach on the one hand and the comparative presentation of the current positive law regulations of the concerned countries on the other hand. Having regard to the limited scope of the study and reasons of rationality, the research area certainly had to be limited. However, the presentation of both segments seemed indispensable for each country. It should be seen that we can review the history of law background only superficially, as we couldn't undertake in-depth analysis of the history uh, of the development of national symbols. Due to that, and to the applied methodology, namely the comparative nature of the research of the current national legal regulations, we have undertaken, in essence, to analyze the rules in force concerning national and state symbols. The research covered seven Central European countries, namely Serbia, Slovenia, Croatia, Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary. The researchers were tasked with exploring the characteristics of the national regulations in their respective countries. The levels of constitutional, criminal, civil, and possibly administrative law uh, were examined separately where it was possible. In addition, it seemed appropriate to place the national regulations concerning national symbols in the seven involved Central European countries in context. That is, we aimed to explore the characteristics of the protection of national and state symbols in Europe in general. 
I have undertaken the research myself and basically divided it into two parts. First, I sought to determine the features of the constitutional regulation on national symbols. Second, I examined the European levels of criminal protection. In this presentation, I wish to point out, in particular, the European characteristics of the constitutional regulation, then I will briefly turn to the criminal law aspects. Before all that, let me briefly talk about the key concepts of the research. Firstly, and most importantly, the meaning of the term symbol. The common meaning of symbol is, uh, I quote, an image, object, or other entity that suggests or refers to something else. In this sense, a symbol uh, is a signifier referring to an independent signified. Thus, in ordinary sense, symbol is a sign whose function may simply be the communication of information. In this sense, sign is a signal. Yet, it may have a deeper and more abstract meaning, that is, it may represent ideas or objects of AU. Let's take the flags, for example. The white flag, for instance, is a signal to the extent that it communicates the information that those waving it are surrendering. A yellow flag on a ship signals an outbreak or a quarantine. However, in its representative function, a flag may be a state flag representing the state and its sovereignty, or a royal flag representing the ruler or the personal power, and so on. This reveals that the symbol is more than a simple signal for communicating information. A symbol is a sign that depicts or expresses some sort of moral substrate, and at the same time, it compels us to establish a certain approach toward itself, that is, to identify with it or honor it, or on the contrary, to resist or disavow it. This research deals with national and state symbols, the anthem flag and coat of arms in particular. We mean by the term state a political community with sovereignty in the modern sense of political science. By sovereignty, we mean supreme power of a given territory and population. The external side of the letter is being recognized as a subject of international law and equal particip participation in international relationships, embodied also in the respect for symbols of the given state. As for the concept of nation, it is important to distinguish between political and cultural concept of nation. Political nation is nothing more than the people itself. That is, all the people living together in the same state. In other words, a so-called state nation means the people living in a certain territory under the power of the same sovereign. Thus, for instance, a Frenchman is a person who is the citizen of France. Cultural nation is somewhat different and somewhat more. It is a group of people with the same ethnicity, culture, traditions, customs, language, and history. I mean this concept in the Wittgensteinian uh, sense of family resemblance. That is, we can speak of a nation when most of these uh, characteristics are present, but ne not necessarily uh, all of them. For example, in the case of Switzerland, uh, a common language is missing, but it is nation. So, the concept of political nation provides a public law framework, while the concept of cultural nation is based on common identity. Of course, these two concepts of nation are not mutually exclusive, but exist in parallel, even if one might be deemed dominant over the other in a given country. For those reasons, we can see national in the cases where a titular nation also exists, representing the majority of the citizens of a given state. If no titular nation exists or doesn't form an absolute majority in a given country, then the symbols are rather state and not national symbols, for example, in Montenegro, or they are not regulated at all in the constitution, as in Switzerland or Belgium. The main symbols are the anthem, the flag, and the coat of arms. The practice of individual countries mostly diverges regarding the anthem. The anthem is national in most countries, but it is state anthem in some. The, 
The other two symbols, the flag and particularly the coat of arms, are state symbols in almost all European countries. Of course, there may be other state and national symbols beyond the three main types. Perhaps the most famous example is the state maxim of France, liberty, equality, fraternity, but there may be emblems stemming from the history of a given country, such as the George Cross in Malta or other symbols. In this latter context, we should point out uh, the protection of the so-called national colors, which is different from the protection of the flag or banner as it reflects the independent protection of a combination of colors representing national identity. Uh, the protection of symbols basically concerns state symbols, even if they are rooted in historical national symbols. It is no coincidence that state uh, symbols principally appear on the level of criminal law, and national symbols in themselves are rarely protected by criminal law provisions. However, the level of constitutional regulation is more complex, particularly in the case of titular, titular nation states. State symbols have now become the manifestation of statehood, basically fulfilling two functions. First, in relation to other states, they express state sovereignty and independence and distinguish the given state from others. This is the external function. Second, in relation to the citizens of the given state, they function as an expression of a sense of belonging. This is the internal or self-defining function. In all countries of Europe, uh, with the exception of the United Kingdom, a so-called codified constitution is enforced whose provisions can be examined as the constitutional regulation of a given state. Uh, the British Constitution is not enacted in the form of such a single public law document, so I will dispense with this comparative analysis the following, noting that there are, of course, symbols in the United Kingdom as well, but no separate laws were adopted on them. In the course of the research, I studied the countries of Europe, with the exception of the UK. I drew up my list based on geographical concept of Europe, but I modified, I had to modify and supplement that in certain cases for cultural reasons or due to the consideration of the actual political situation. For example, Cyprus is geographically uh, part of Asia, but culturally part of Europe. Armenia is also entirely in Asia, yet it is also a member of the Council of Europe and culturally also because of its uh, Christian roots, should be seen as part of Europe. Furthermore, I also try to involve those entities uh, that have the external and internal fe features of statehood, even though this was not easy to clearly determine in certain cases. So I studied Kosovo, but omitted the de facto states uh, lacking international recognition, that is recognition by most European countries, for example, Transnistria, uh, Turkish Republic of uh, Northern Cyprus, Abkhazia, Artsakh, the ex nagorno karabakh uh, or South Ossetia. I haven't examined the Vatican either. Now I wish to turn to the general European features of the constitutional regulation of state symbols. The written constitutions of European countries usually regulate the state symbols at the beginning of the constitution among the most important fundamental provisions. The only exceptions are Bulgaria, Norway and Italy. Moreover, uh, the state symbols are most often regulated together with the official language or official languages and the capital and sometimes uh, with the official state religion of the given state. This, of course, doesn't mean that the latter ones are also symbols. As regards the constitutional regulation, we can distinguish between states whose constitution regulate each of the three traditional symbol types, those whose constitution mention only two of them, those whose constitutional provisions concern only one of them, and uh, uh, those where reference to any symbol types is omitted totally in the constitution. Uh, this classification is further refined by the fact that other state symbols are also regulated uh, or can be regulated in the constitution of certain countries. The relatively most frequent type of regulation among the uh, 53 examined countries 
when each of the three classic state symbols, coat of arms, flag, and anthem, appears in the Constitution. 25 countries apply this type of regulation in total. In 20 countries, uh, these three symbols and only those are regulated in the Constitution. There are only seven, mostly Eastern and Central European countries among them, where the main features of the appearance of all the three main state symbols are defined, concretely defined in the Constitution. This is the case in Azerbaijan, Croatia, Hungary, Lithuania, Montenegro, Slovenia, and Ukraine. As regards the flag, Azerbaijan and Slovenia deserve special attention as the ratio of the width and length of the flag is also determined at a constitutional level. The regulation of Hungary is also unique to the extent that not only the colors of the flag and their arrangement are determined in the constitution, but also the things symbolized by each color. Person to the fundamental law, I quote, the flag of Hungary shall feature three horizontal bands of equal width colored red, white, and green from top to bottom as the symbols of strength, loyalty, and hope, respectively. The constitutions of Serbia and Slovenia mention that there is a difference between the state flag and the national flag, and the constitution of Ukraine includes a similar reference regarding the anthem. Moreover, in Serbia and in Ukraine, the greater and lesser state coat of arms, uh, the bigger and the smaller coat of arms, are also distinguished, as well as uh, in the Czech Republic, as we will see later. There are five countries, Albania, Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Romania, and Slovakia, where other symbols, besides the flag, the anthem, and the coat of arms, also exist at the constitutional level. Uh, I will speak only the constitutional level. The most frequent among such additional symbols is the state seal, recognized as a state symbol by the constitutions of all five countries. It is interesting that the state seal is recognized as a state symbol in only two additional European countries, namely in Austria and Kosovo. In Romania, beyond the anthem, flag, coat of arms, and the state seal, there is another special symbol, the national day, which is the 1st of December, pursuant to the Constitution. Uh, finally, the Czech Republic has the most complex state symbol system regulated at a constitutional level. In addition to the traditional three symbols, the so-called greater and lesser coat of arms are distinguished, indicated as small and large state emblems by the Constitution. Moreover, the Constitution identifies the state seal, the state colors, and the flag of the President of the Republic as symbols. And the second large group uh, consists of nine countries where only two of the three traditional symbols and from flag coat of arms are identified as state symbols, and some of them provide for further special symbols as well. In Portugal and Turkey, the flag and the anthem are indicated at a constitutional level. In France, Kosovo and Malta, there are additional special state symbols besides the flag and the anthem. The regulation adopted in France is unique in Europe for several reasons. First, the national emblem is the flag itself, that is the tricolor, instead of the coat of arms, uh, as general. Uh, second, and that is also unique in Europe, the maxim of liberty, equality, fraternity rooted in the French Revolution is also a state symbol. Third, there is a so-called principle of the Republic saying government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Although this is not a symbol in a strict sense, nor is the French official state language regulated by the same article, but has a role equivalent to a symbol. In Kosovo, the seal is identified as a traditional state symbol in addition to the flag and the anthem, just like the George Cross in Malta, which has a significant role as an emblem depicted on the flag. The second subcategory is characterized by the fact that only the flag and the coat of arms are regulated in the constitution, but not the anthem. This is the case in Monaco, where the state coat of arms is also the coat of arms of the prince and it is regulated as such, uh, as well as in Austria and Estonia. 
Finally, the third subcategory of the second group uh, encompasses the states that regulate only the coat of arms and the anthem, but not the flag. There is only one such country in Europe, namely Poland, which, however, expressly provides for the national colors instead of the flag as an additional symbol. Uh, there are eight countries where only one of the three main state or national symbols are identified at the constitutional level. The vast majority of these countries, seven out of eight, regulates the flag, but not the anthem and the coat of arms, and one of them regulates the coat of arms. The constitutions of Cyprus, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Norway, and Spain only provide for the flag and no other additional or special symbols. Two of those countries have particularly interesting constitutional regulations. The constitution of Cyprus, on the one hand, doesn't describe the appearance of the flag, nor does it authorize any separate laws to do so, but merely says the following, I quote, uh, the Republic shall have its own flag of neutral design and color chosen jointly by the President and the Vice President of the Republic. The President is always a Greek and the Vice President is always a Turkish. On the other hand, it includes detailed provisions on the use of the flag of Cyprus as well as the use of the Greek and the Turkish uh, flags along with it since Cyprus is inhabited uh, by two nations, Greek and Turkish, uh, uh, the flags uh, can be uh, used along with the, the Cypriot flag. And uh, the Spanish constitution also allows the self-governing uh, communities, for example, Catalonia and so on, uh, to use their own flags or banners, but uh, only along with the Spanish flag. And the Liechtenstein is the only country uh, whose constitution regulates exclusively the coat of arms as state symbol, but not the anthem and the flag. However, instead of providing for the flag, it additionally provides for the national colors. Finally, in the constitutions of 11 countries, there are no references at all uh, to any state or national symbols. In sum, uh, 42 European countries provide for at least one such symbol, and there are only 11 countries in Europe whose constitution includes no reference to state symbols at all. In 25 of the said 42 countries, all three classical symbols can be found, supplemented with a few additional symbols in five of them. Only two symbols are provided for in nine countries, in a diversity of variations, while only one symbol is regulated in eight countries. If we separately examine how specifically the constitutions of these 42 countries define the symbols, we will see that their description or designation can be considered typical, for example, the indication of the specific song or piece of music that serves as the anthem. From among the said 42, only 13 countries have constitutional regulations that merely mention and not describe or regulate in detail the relevant symbols. There are 12 countries whose constitution contains special procedural provisions for the determination of state symbols. The most extraordinary, however, appears to be Turkish constitution, since it includes an eternity clause concerning the regulated state symbols, namely the flag and the anthem, and concerning also the capital, Ankara, provided for in the same article, and two other articles on the Republic as the form of state and its essential features. The Eternity Clause stipulates that these provisions are unchangeable as they, I quote, shall not be amended, nor shall their amendment be proposed. Five constitutions expressly provide for national colors as national symbols. As mentioned before, additional special state symbols are provided for at a constitutional level in certain European countries, namely the state seal in Albania, Austria, Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Kosovo, Romania, and Slovakia, the flag of the President of the Republic in the Czech Republic, and National Day in Romania. Uh, and a maxim in France, a principle also in France, or a certain emblem, the George Cross or the St. George Cross in Malta. There are additional distinctions in a few certain countries between the small and the large state coat of arms in the Czech Republic, 
Serbia and Ukraine, the state and the national flag in Serbia and Slovenia, the state and the national anthem in Ukraine, and the distinction between the state symbols and the national symbols in Kosovo, where the latter are not regulated in the constitution at all. Finally, uh, although it is not the subject of this presentation, it should be mentioned that out of the uh, 53 examined countries with separate criminal codes, uh, special criminal offenses were codified in 38 countries in order to protect state or national symbols. This means that 70% uh, of the European countries find it important to criminalize the violation, desecration, or other similar acts concerning uh, these symbols, even if they don't involve any violence, incitement to violence, or incitement to hatred, or vandalism. The United Kingdom not only lacks a written constitution, but also lacks a uh, separate criminal code, nor is the violation of symbols penalized by any other laws in the UK. It is interesting that the respect for symbols is often not limited to a state's own symbols. 21 countries criminalize also the violation of foreign state symbols based on unilateral commitment in some cases and reciprocity in others. 11 countries sanction also the violation of symbols of some international organizations, United Nations, European Union, Council of Europe, and so on. Overall, it can be seen that the respect for state and national symbols cannot be considered outdated or obsolete even in Europe, the homeland of enlightenment. That respect is reflected both in the text of the constitutions and in criminal law. Europe is often perceived as a continent no longer in need of its art culture. But on the contrary, we can see that both the constitutions and the criminal codes consider such symbols as values to be protected. This is the case not only in the eastern and central, but also in the western part of Europe. So, at the level of legal regulation, there is no significant difference between eastern and western Europe in a geographical sense, or between the former socialist countries and the countries that have long been capitalists. In that regard, neither can a connection be established with the form of state, monarchy or republic, or the nature of the state organization, federal or unitary state. The only characteristic feature, not only in Europe, is that the common law systems, based on the classification of René Davy, including also the United Kingdom, lack the state protection of symbols, while such protection exists in most legal systems of the Roman or Germanic legal families. Unfortunately, a 30-minute presentation can cover nothing more than the essence of the research concept, the schematic definition of the applied terms, and the summary outline of the most important findings. The exam in Central European legal systems will be described by the members of the research group or distinguished professors. Dear colleagues and dear audience, I wish to thank you on their and on my own behalf for coming and honoring this conference with your presence. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.